but thanks for kicking it off for us. Um, so today, I really just want to talk about some of the research that we've been conducting here in North Carolina. Um, and that's because we have a lot of broiler production in North Carolina, um, approaching 100 million broilers a year. We've got, as you can see, some really dense pockets of um, broiler production. And so that means we have dense pockets of manure production. Um, in, in North Carolina, we also are known for swine and turkey production. So we're producing a lot of manure in North Carolina. Um, and we would really like to see it being more widely distributed. And especially with high fertilizer prices right now, we know that manure is going to be going on ground that it, it hasn't traditionally gone on in some places just to uh, try to uh, save some money on fertilizer costs. And so um, every year I get a call or an email about whether weeds in a field could be from a manure application, uh, typically from a couple years ago. And, um, and that's really kind of why I started this uh, journey. I'm not a weed scientist. I'm not a crops person. I'm a manure person who does a lot of fertility work. Um, but the reason why I jumped into this is because I experienced what a lot of other people have experienced. This is a trial that we had going on in crabgrass a few years ago. Um, yes, I know some of you think crabgrass is a, a weed as well, but it's also a good forage crop that we're trying to get uh, nutrient recommendations for. But we had some high manure plots that it seemed like there were more weeds than other plots. Um, and some of our high inorganic fertilizer plots also had quite a few weeds. Um, and so we wanted to see is it coming from the manure? Because we, we weren't really sure and we had some quite extensive weeds in, in quite a few of our plots. So uh, we wanted to test out, all right, are the weeds from the soil? Did we just get in a field that has a lot of uh, seeds in the seed bank? Um, or is it coming from the poultry litter that we applied? So we went on to test this uh, within the lab. And so we did a grow out study looking at uh, two different substrates, soil and sand. And then we had with or without litter, and then we had autoclaved or not autoclaved. And autoclaved, that sterilizes the soil. Uh, and so that tells us uh, that all the weeds are inactivated or should be inactivated within the soil after we autoclave them. So we had a total of eight treatments that we replicated 10 times. Um, and what we found is when we had the soil from our field, we had a lot of germination from that soil. We had a lot of uh, seedlings come up. Uh, and in fact, when we had uh, litter on top of the soil, we saw a reduction in seedlings, which we weren't expecting. But the biggest thing is that when we autoclave the soil, we saw no weeds uh, come up, which tells us that the, the seedlings were coming from, the weeds were coming from our soil seed bank in this one instance. Now that's, that was the, the light bulb moment for me as, oh, I can see why people are thinking that the weeds coming in from the manure, I, I thought it myself. And so I wanted to look at this more in depth. Um, and so we're really lucky in North Carolina to have a very extensive extension network. Uh, and we have area specialized poultry agent, agents that are across the state. And I, I reached out to them and said, hey, can we get poultry litters from across the state? And they, they obliged me within a week, I had 37 poultry litters. Uh, so we started off with 37 poultry litters. Uh, we mixed those with potting media. So we actually found through initial testing that if we just put seeds into poultry litter, that they would not germinate. It was actually, it had a toxic effect. So we had to do some testing to figure out how much do we need to dilute the poultry litter into the potting media uh, or with the potting media to get seeds to germinate. And so we, we uh, settled upon a nine to one ratio um, potting media being the nine uh, and litter being the one. And so this is on a dry weight basis. So every Petri dish had 20 grams of potting media litter mix. Uh, and then that equated to about a gram of fresh litter in each dish. And we replicated those five times. So we had these 37 litters that we diluted to see if anything would germinate. Uh, and then we had two sets of controls to test the germination uh, capabilities of this condition. And so we had controls that just had potting media and we spiked those with three different seeds. And then we had uh, controls that had a mixture of the potting media and litter uh, and we spiked seeds into those as well. And that's just to make sure that 
when we put seeds into this mix that we were still able to, to see the germination, that we weren't having that toxicity effect. Uh, and our three different uh, control weed species were mustard, wheat, and sickle pods. So we spiked with 50 seeds each mustard and wheat, and then we had 30 seeds of sickle pod because it's a really big seed. And then we put these into a germination chamber, and I'm going to report on the first 10 days, but we actually decided to take this out to a three-week experiment, so it's still running. This is what our setup looks like. We weighed out the poultry litters. We mixed those with the potting media and those uh, petri dishes with the stickers on them have different weed species that were added to those, to those petri dishes. And then we put these into a growth chamber uh, to germinate for 10 days. Um, and in our controls, we saw, you know, that they were able to start germinating really quickly. Um, so that, that told us that we had good conditions for germination, but the results turned out that we didn't find any uh, weed seed in any of the 30 lit 37 litters that we tested over that first 10 day period. And, and I, don't, I don't know that we will find any um, uh, throughout the 21 days, but I just wanted to make sure I gave it adequate time. Um, also, the spiked controls showed improved germination uh, as a result of the pol poultry litter addition. Um, and I talked to a weed scientist and he said nitrate can induce germination in some instances. So that could be the reason why we saw better germination of the weed seeds that we spiked uh, as compared to uh, germination of our controls with the, just the potting media. Um, and so the next steps are going to be that we're going to continue this project. We're going to continue receiving these litters, um, but we're also going to add in a survey. So we're going to request uh, storage conditions. So whether it's fresh from the house or whether it's been stockpiled on the edge of a field or whether it's been in a litter shed and how long that, that litter has been stored, if it has been, because uh, that is another aspect that could influence uh, contamination. Um, also bedding materials. So in North Carolina, a lot of people are using wood shavings, uh, but some are using alternative bedding sources such as miscanthus, which is a bioenergy crop. Uh, and so there's opportunity for some differences there. And then also looking at species, we grow turkeys, we have uh, egg layers, we have broilers, primarily broilers, but we do have all these other types of litters that could be generated. Uh, so we want to make sure we capture that as well. And then any treatment and handling. As we've heard, compost is a really effective strategy uh, to uh, um, mitigate weed seed. And so, uh, you know, maybe there's, there's something in there that we need to look at. I also know that a lot of growers uh, in North Carolina are also windrowing and partially composting their litter uh, between flocks. And so that's something we could also look at is the treatment of the litter in-house between flocks and seeing if that could have an impact as well. Um, and then different methods. So we're doing the grow out method, but now we're gonna learn a little bit more about the wet sieving method. So I'm gonna pass it off. I know